and of residence has been endorsed by owners and contractors as a powerful vehicle to assist in gaining market share for our members and our UA contractor. Every local union needs to get on board for the benefit of our members and their families. That's pretty much what, what, the, uh, what the standard for excellence was from, from his viewpoint. And something I really think is important about the standard for excellence, it was a collaborative document that was designed by both labor and management. The standard for excellence is, is really what I consider to be the UA's and our UA contractors platform for uh, gaining market share. It's a number that you may or may not know. The all-time high of the UA membership was in 1982, 352,000 members. The all-time low was 1995 with 292,000 members. And today we're sitting at about 340,000 members. You know, that's a couple things I think should, should wake us up and, and uh, and, and get us committed to, to doing something different or doing something better. When you think about 30 years ago, we had 12,000 more members. You know, how many businesses normally would still be in business to be that much shrunk, you know, after 30 years? Again, General President Heist's number one goal for his membership is to gain more market share. Standard for Excellence is a big part of that. There's a lot of things that are going on at the UA that I think are so powerful. I know this chokes a lot of us, but, you know, politics plays a big role. <laughs> And, and everything we do, unfortunately, but uh, he's got a team of politicians and a, a bunch of people that are working on that. You know, the Green uh, Initiative really does help it whenever we have the good trained people to do the work. You know, training is our element. Uh, the number that we're using right now is a little bit north, actually, of $250 million a year is what is, is, uh, is spent on training in the U.S. You know, a strong partnership between labor and management will define our, our, our future. You know, the tripartite, any, how many of you went out to the tripart any of the tripartites that we've had? You know, uh, again, uh, that's, that's a, a big initiative for the UA. You know, our end users, our contractors, and our UA members. You know, uh, the tripartite approach to, uh, to, getting, uh, to getting together. And, you know, much like Warren said, one side can only be as strong as the other. Three years ago when I started doing this, it, it boiled down to three things <clears throat> to me in this stand of reference. Our image, our productivity, and our labor management relations. And when you really take those three pretty big topics, I don't think it's changed very much. As a matter of fact, I'm still pretty stuck on those are the three pathways, uh, you know, out of this challenge that we have. Second part of this is productivity. You know, uh, I, I, you know, we were a, we were a great relationship-based company. Uh, I, I think that if you know they'd always give us the wink and try to beat us down, but they'd never take a job away from us. I think that uh, people who are selling on relationships right now has got a real challenge. I think a relationship deal will get you maybe one or two percent. You know, if it's a jump ball, they may tip it your way. But there aren't too many general contractors out there, even when they know that a good UA contractor is going to provide the kind of people and the kind of service and the safety and all the elements that they're looking for. Even if they know that, they will probably not risk a five percent uh, additional price with a with a union contractor over a non-union contractor and risk losing the job. Labor management's being, you know, the silver bullet. You know, General President Hyde has phrased a, a, a term that I've heard him use a lot, and he says it to his own members a lot, he says it to his leadership a lot, and you know, and again, this just falls right in place with uh, him talking about customers and end users. What's a union guy talking about customers and end users? We don't care about that, we're the union. You know, this, this fits right in there too. He says, nothing happens at the UA until one of our UA contractors get a job. Now, that pretty well sums it up. That pretty well sums it up. He says the UA hires nobody, and I think that's pretty, uh, pretty important. Standard for Excellence creates a platform for labor management. You know, it's the Standard for Excellence is the UA's promise and guarantee. You know, it's not uh, one of the contractors in this room. It isn't Bechtel's, it isn't Fleur's, it isn't uh, Southern companies. It isn't anybody. It's our promise and guarantee to ourselves as an organization. What I'm saying is, is you ever heard of the old term called death by a thousand paper cuts? You know, it isn't like somebody, you know, whacks your, your juggler vein. It's just a nick and a nick and a nick and a nick. That is what I think happens in our, on our projects. You know, when you look at a general, the average uh, UA journey person here in the, in the country gets about a buck a minute. About a buck a minute is what the average UA journey person costs. When you talk about this idea of a th cut, uh, death by a thousand paper cuts, it isn't like you got a 50 person or 100 person job and you know 50 come in hungover, 40 come in don't give a damn, and the other 10 are somewhere in between. It's this long break, this late start, this early stop. It's, it's all these different things 
along with, you know, the cell phone calls, the rework, I mean, you know, at the, the prices that we get, we don't have a lot of money baked in these bids for rework. So you really have to understand that it isn't, it isn't really, you know, in our face, uh, uh, you know, how, how, how these jobs get out of whack. And then for our, our UA members in the room that don't maybe uh, have the visibility about how contractors bid a job, when contractors bid a job and the job goes great, the, you know, the music gets loud and everybody's happy. When we lose money on a job, contractors go back, they dissect them, they find out where it happened, and guess what they usually do? They bank that into the next bid, and that drives us farther away usually from the, from the next the next opportunity. Yourself, not only just check out yourself, check out your project management teams, check out everybody that is on the non-signatory side and find out where they are with the standard for excellence. I think you'll find that there's just at least as much opportunity there on the contractor side as there on the union side. Because you know what? If a contractor was to call the hall and, and to get all tens, ten being the, the, the best of the best, got a whole wad of tens, ten, all tens, 80 tens out there, and they didn't have the tools, materials, equipment, the leadership, the encouragement, or whatever, he might as well have the duds, the scruffies. So, you know, there's just a great opportunity there to re-examine both sides. Overall in the country, for every 10 of us that are out there doing work, there's about 90 bad guys. We got about 10% general market share throughout the United States, just like the number I gave you. We probably got 175,000 people actively today doing UA work, UA claimed work, in all of America and Canada. You know, we do get paid like professionals. I mean, I don't think anybody, you know, in this room is getting paid, uh, you know, $25 million a year like a Derek Jeter or a, a Tom Brady or something. Maybe this Nick Saban, he's probably going to be getting a raise here pretty quick. <laughs> but, you know, I don't think anybody in this room is probably making that kind of money. But I'll just say this, we do get paid like professionals when you think about how we are at the top of our trade. We're at the very, very top of our trade in our industry. Um, and you know, I think whenever you are the best of anything, whether we're talking about a sports figure, or you're talking about a Warren Buffett or anything, when you're looked at as being the best of the best, there's a lot of responsibility that comes along with that. A lot of responsibility. And so this idea of uh, trying to hit home runs every single day, I mean, you know, you go, let's just say your kids always want to go to Yankee Stadium. You pack your kid up, you go over to New York, you buy a ticket, you buy a, Get him in there between the plane, the train, the automobile, the, the hotel, and the ticket. And you got two, three thousand dollars of best. I don't think you're getting in, going in there to see uh, Derek Jeter fumble a couple of, of uh, easy uh, uh, hit balls to him or, or strike out three times. I mean, it's just really a lot of responsibility. I would never say that we don't deserve what we get. I would never say that Derek Jeter ain't worth $25 million. You know why he's worth $25 million a year? Because he fills that stadium up every day. So I'd say the Steinbrenner clan is making a few bucks off of him. But, you know, we're not still filling our, our stadiums up. So, you know, we just have a lot of responsibility to, to make that relationship between what we get paid and how much pipe and duct and, and plumbing that we get put in the ground and in the air every single day. You read through both the left-hand side of that little brochure in front of you that lays out the UA uh, member commitments. You read the, the contractor commitments on the other side. If we're hitting... Tom Brady touchdowns every time, every one of them, every single day on every single project, I would bet you that we could probably reduce our total bids by 20%. Our contractors would probably double their profit, and the UA would be getting the, the traditional good you know, uh, cost of living and, and every other raises that go along with it. The standard for excellence is not a witch hunt for the five percenters. Sometimes we get a little stymied whenever we, uh, whenever we, uh, Get, get into a, a, a straight with the union people. They think this is a witch hunt to get rid of the five percenters. It is not that at all. It is about taking all 340,000 members. Let's all meet the standard. Those who can't meet the standard, what do they need to do to meet the standard? What, what, what can we do with our JATC training, our journeyman training? What can we do to, to meet the standard on every day? However, you know, if the UA member consistently shows disrespect through their actions, to their unions, to their brothers, to their contractors, to their customers, and you know usually they're disrespectful to their own selves too. We will free up their future and there's ways to do that.